Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church this morning. Very Christmassy here. Okay, so that's thanks to uh, Sue and Linda, I believe. Yeah. I'm going to read from Isaiah 9, verses 6 to 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end, upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice, from the time forward even evermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you that we can come into your house this morning and just praise you together and uh, fellowship together, Lord, and learn from your word. We just want to bless you this morning and may you be honored in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand, and if you like in your hymnal, you can turn to uh, 80. 83, page 83, O come all ye faithful. I think we have it on the overhead as well. Thank you. 
Joyful 
Excited about his part in the Christmas play, came home and said, I got a part in the Christmas play. What part? asked the mother. I'm one of the three wise guys, he said. There you go. For Christmas, I thought this one was funny too, so I'll read you this one. At Christmas, a woman remarked to her friend, I was visited by a jolly bearded fellow with a big bag over his shoulder. My son came home from college with his laundry. <laughs> <laughs> if you would turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Luke, we're going to look at a story in Luke chapter 1. And if you'd stand with us as we read God's word together. We're going to look at the story from verse 26 to verse 38. Luke chapter 1, reading in the New King James Version, verse 26 to 38. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son. You shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom, there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that, that Holy One who is born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing is impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Father, we thank you for this amazing story. Lord, we thank you for your word that gives us these accounts that we can read them, we can study them, we can compare them with other verses in the Bible and just see so much truth. And we pray as we look at this story this morning that you'd be with us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. I love Christmas. It's probably one of my favorite times of the year. I love the decorating and the... My wife starts decorating sometime usually in November because she has a lot of decorations. And if you asked her, she would say, that's because of you that I have a lot of decorations. <laughs> Which is probably more true than I would like to admit. So, but I just did. 
So, but what I love about Christmas most is that it's just natural to talk about Jesus, to hear songs about Jesus at the mall, and, you know, uh, we go and we do the kettles, and if you can sign up for, for even, even half an hour there, bring your family over there and do some singing. Because you know what? You can come there and you can sing about Jesus. And the store is full. And the reason I put our dates down is the 19th, 21st, and 23rd. Because I get to see all the basketball girls that I've coached. They all come to town. And, so do, and the store is completely full. And we get to sing about Jesus. And it's fantastic. So bring your family down for an hour or two or, or half an hour or whatever on those dates, 19th, 21st, 23rd. It's fantastic. So in this story, we, we're looking at the story from Mary's perspective. There's a song that was written by um, Laurie is his last name. Anyways, he, uh, he's a comedian. And he used to sing for the Gaither Band. And he wrote this song called Mary Did You Know? Mark Lowry. Mark Lowry, that's it. Mark Lowry. Thank you. And, you know, Mark's a comedian. And so he got to thinking one day, you know, just, just this whole idea. Uh, you know, this conversation Mary would have with, with, with Jesus, you know, like, close the door. Were you born in a barn? Yeah. You know, and that's just the way Mark Lowry thinks. Well, well he had this thought, okay. What did Mary know? And, and it's just such a beautiful song. And it's a song, you know, did Mary, did you know all these different questions? You know, did, he, did you know what, what would happen to your son? But you know, in this story, there's an incredible amount that is told to, to Mary right here. Like, like look at what the, the, the angel says. You know, I was listening to a message by... Um, Dr. David Jeremiah, and he talked about seven things the angel says about Jesus. One, and take a look there where it says this. Behold, you will conceive in your room and bring forth a son, shall call his name Jesus. I'm reading in verse 31. Verse 32, he will be great will be called the son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and is in his kingdom there will be no end. You know, and the seven things that Jeremiah talked about was, one, Mary would be a virgin in her conception of Jesus. Two, his, the humanity of Jesus. You know, when we read these words in Isaiah 9, 6, a child is born. Do you know that Mary was told she would have a son before she was, she was even conceived? That's not normal. You know, people can find out afterwards with an ultrasound what gender it is, but Mary knew Jesus would be a boy before she was even conceived. Number three, Messiahship. Jehovah would come to, to save people from their sins. Mary knew before she was born, Jesus would be the savior of the world. Number four, that Jesus would be great. He would be, everything about him was great. The way he was born was great. The miracles that he did when he was alive was great. His life and his death and his resurrection, all of it was great. The deity of Jesus, Isaiah 9, 6 again says, a child is born, a son is given. That Jesus would be God. The kingship of Jesus. You know, it says in, it says in Isaiah 9, 7, he will reign over Israel and the world. And we read in 2 Samuel about David being promised his kingdom would never end. And here Jesus is a fulfillment of that. And number seven, 
He, he's an eternal reigning kingdom. His reign would be forever and ever and ever. So these are some of the things that Jesus was told by the angel. You know, and we're going to look at four things this morning. What are four things that Mary knew or that she learned? The first one, Mary was blessed. Mary was blessed. Take a look at verse 41 and 42. This is during Mary's visit with Elizabeth. It happened that Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary. The baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. You know, what a, what a wonderful thing that, you know, when she asked the question, Mary asked the question, I am a virgin. How can this be? And, and the angel gave more details. And one of the details the angel gave was that your, your relative, Elizabeth, is also having a miraculous pregnancy. And she is now six months into her pregnancy. And so what does Mary do? She goes to visit her. And just when they come, when they come in the presence of each other, this baby leaps in in Elizabeth's womb. And you think about that. It's John the Baptist that would foretell. He would be the Elijah, the spokesperson that would, that would share about Jesus coming. And here Mary has this experience with her, with, with Elizabeth, and, it's, and, she, and, she, and she calls her blessed. Take a look at her, her uh, song. Her song In verse 48, it says, he has, he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth, all generations will call me blessed. You know, this is part of this song, this, this prayer song that, that Mary, that Mary uh, 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 says, puts together. And it's all, it's, it's all different scriptures. And one of the scriptures is a story way back in Genesis when Asher is named and he's named blessed. That's what his name means. His name means blessed. And, and when Leah named Asher in, in Genesis chapter 30, he, he, she said, blessed. And here Mary takes this from that very scripture. So the first thing that Mary knew Mary knew she'd be blessed. Art Kent Hughes says it this way. Mary was a woman of billions to have inhabited the earth who was, who was, who was to carry and nurse God's son. We must call her blessed. The Savior bore some of her human features. Jesus' face could be seen in her face. Have you ever thought about that? That Jesus probably looked like Mary. That's what happens. We look like our parents, don't we? We have that look about us, right? She's blessed indeed, and just because others thought too much of her, we must not imagine our Lord is pleased when we think too little of her. And you know, you think about where he's coming with this so many times as evangelicals, we want to downplay Mary. And Mary was very special. Mary was very, very special. Chosen to be the mother of Jesus. She was blessed. Point number two this morning. Mary lost her reputation. Mary lost her reputation. You know, you think about it. What Mary went through. You know, she went to visit Elizabeth. Why? Because she needed support. And she went there and Elizabeth said all these kind things about her. She spent time there. She encouraged her and encouraged her and encouraged her. But you know what would happen? Even her own husband, Joseph, did not believe her. 
you know what we where we, we're going to be having our our christmas um uh, supper with the trojans here on tuesday and i'm going to do what i i, I do on, on, at our christmas get together i'm going to single out one one trojan and i'm going to give him this scenario and i've shared this many times but it just it just captures what's going on here i give this player this scenario imagine you're playing hockey over there in europe and you find out you've got a fiance back home and and you find out not from her that she's pregnant you're not the dad what are you going to do and usually they'll do something like this one of the boys goes and that's exactly what joseph did he wanted to quietly divorce her you know and i was doing some research this week and you know israel's culture the the, the middle east culture is a is is a shame or honor culture do you know why he was going to divorce he wanted to keep his name his family name do you know that Mary's name was mud? And so was Jesus with people. You remember when the Pharisees called Jesus, they said, you're a bastard son. That's what they called him. And, and think about it. Think about what it would have been like and all the different talking that would have went on. All of it. You know, it, it, it was, it was, it was, it was such, why do, why do you think Joseph trekked her all the way across all that way to be born in Bethlehem. Well, it fulfilled scripture, but Joseph could have went there by himself. But you know what he knew? He didn't want to, he didn't want Mary to face, be alone and face all the ridicule being back there with all the people that talk and talk and talk and talk. Hey, we live in Tisdale. We know how this works. When something happens, there's a lot of talk and talk and talk and talk. Right? That was Mary's life. That was Jesus' life. But you know what? Jesus didn't come here to win a popularity contest. And you know, sometimes we have to just go on living. People say what they say. And you know why we do what's right? Because it's right. Mary knew. Mary knew where this child came from. Mary knew she was doing incredible things for God. And I want to ask you a question. Do you think that she will be someone that is honored in heaven? Uh, yes. Because she suffered all that ridicule here. And those people that ridiculed her, do you think that they're going to have this great place in heaven? Uh, no. Who, where would you rather have? Where would you rather be honored? Here on earth, in this short little time, or in heaven? And sometimes we need to do what's right and be ridiculed and have been given a bad reputation. And you know what? God honors that. He calls us to take up our cross. And before that was even talked about, Mary was doing it. She gave up her reputation. You know, um, Philip Yancey in his book, The Jesus I Never Knew, this is what he says. Nine months of awkward explanations, the lingering scent of scandal. It seems that God arranged the most humiliating circumstances possible for his entrance, as if to avoid any charge of favoritism. I am impressed that when the Son of God became a human being, he played by the rules, harsh rules, small town, do not treat kindly young boys who grow up with questionable paternity. Isn't that the truth? Right? So Mary was one who lost her reputation for the Lord. Point number three this morning. Mary knew Jesus would be great. Mary knew Jesus would be great. You know, I was listening to Robert Morris, and he was talking about the story, the very first miracle. And one thing I love about John, the, the, John the writer, John uh, who wrote the Gospel of John, he writes this when he's an old, old man. And he fills in a lot of gaps. 
What one of the things he does is he he gives us Jesus' first miracle. You know it's his first miracle because Jesus even says to his mother, it's not my time yet. And you remember what Mary says? She says, we're out of wine. And then he says to them, do exactly what Jesus says. And in, uh, in Robert Morris's message, and he says, I'm not trying to, to bring out new theology, but think about how did Mary know that Jesus could do all these miracles? You know, perhaps, you know, one day, you know, there was, they were short of flour, and Mary said to Jesus, would you go down to the store and get some flour? Yeah, but I got this paper due. I got to get this paper done. Go take a look in the cupboard one more time. I'm not saying that happened, but maybe it did. You know, and the, and the family, the family dog, you know, Rover. Uh, Rover gets hit by a chariot, and uh, all the kids are crying. And Mary looks over at Jesus and says, "Oh, Jesus! Oh, look, Rover's okay." I'm not saying these things happened. I have no idea, but we do know this. Mary knew that Jesus was great, that he would do all these incredible miracles. And so what, is, what does Mary say to Jesus? He says, we're out of wine. And then to, to, to the man, do exactly what he says. And of course, Jesus turns water into wine. Jesus did many great things, raising men to life, Late, uh, the, the children to life, all these things. And of course, the greatest miracle of all, Jesus walked out of the tomb. Mary knew Jesus was great. <laughs> Point number four this morning. Mary knew her heart would be pierced. Look at Mark, or, or, I mean Luke chapter 2, verse 35. Luke chapter 2, verse 35. I shall read verse 34. Simeon blessed them, said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for, for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Mary knew early on her heart would be broken. And you know, think about it. As Mary lived her life, you know, there was a time when Jesus was gone at 12 years old, and Mary and Joseph were practically looking for her. And I wonder if she had a thought. That we better find him. I, I don't want my heart broken. You know, later on, she watches as Jesus is arrested. Can you imagine being a mom? And that is your son. That is your flesh and blood son, and you're watching that. You know, I, I just can't even imagine what it was like for her. Irvin Lutzer says this, she who had plant, planted kisses on his bow, but that little child now saw that same brow crowned with thorns. She who had held those little hands as he learned to walk now saw those same hands pierced with nails. She who had cradled him in her arms now saw his arms stretch out on a cross. She who loved him at birth came to love him even more in death. Mary knew her heart would be pierced. You know, this, this um, story in John, and we were talking about that John fills in some of the gaps. Look at John's account when he is, when Jesus is about to die. And you read in verse from chapter 19, John chapter 19, you read in verse 24. 
Now they said, therefore, among themselves, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it. Whose it shall be, and that the scripture might be filled, which says, they divided up my garments amongst them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Therefore the soldiers did these things. Look at the very next verse. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus' mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, Mary Magdalene, and when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. Chuck Swindoll asked this question. Who wove the robe? Who made that garment for Jesus? Think of this moment. Jesus is watching. He didn't really say a lot. He just suffered a lot when he was on that cross. They're all watching. As the soldiers start to gamble for this robe, I want to ask you, who made the robe? <clears throat> His mother made that robe. She made that role for him. And look at the very next words here. Jesus saw his mother. And he said to her, Woman, behold your son. And then to the disciple, behold your mother. This was a very tender moment. Can you imagine what Mary is going through? As she is watching this robe that she made being gambled for. And Jesus looks at her and she looks at him. And they have this very tender moment. This was Jesus' mother. But it's more than that. It's more than that because Jesus actually says, John. Now John is writing this. Think about what it was like for John. He, John had Mary in his home. They had conversations. They talked about this. They talked about what it was like to watch Jesus suffer and die. They talked about it, what it was like for Jesus to ask John to treat Mary, who many scholars believe is his aunt, to treat her like his own flesh and blood mother. But you know, I was listening to a message, a very powerful message. You know what I was talking about here? It says it's more than just Jesus having Mary become a mother. You know what Jesus was doing? Jesus was bringing Mary from realizing she was, she was the physical mom to, to, to understanding Jesus is my Savior. Jesus is my Savior. The mother role John would fulfill from this day forward. The savior role. The savior role Jesus was fulfilling for Mary and for all of us. And you think, like, you know, I've often thought about all the suffering Jesus went through. And, and, I, and I still just have such a hard time with it understanding why did Jesus have to go through so much for me? But you know, it is, it is the reality when we are in heaven and we see those, those scars in his hands and his side and, and we see that and we will eternally remember the reason we're there is because Jesus died for us and Mary will be no different. The reason she is there is because Jesus. Now, she had a very exceptional, amazing role because she literally got to be the mom of Jesus. But think about what is going on here. When Jesus says to his mother, behold, your son. So what did Mary 
What did Mary know? What did Mary learn through her life? She learned a lot of things that we learn. She learned that Jesus is great. Jesus is fully man. Unto us a child is born. He is fully God. Unto us a son is given. Jesus learned, or, or Mary learned that Jesus is a king. Jesus will eternally reign. Mary learned many things. And I think we could admire her. I think we could admire her for who she was. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, that you were so caring even while you were dying. You thought of Mary, who had made this robe, as you watched the soldiers gamble for it. And Lord, you think about us, and you think about what we're going through, and you care about us, and you answer our prayers, not always the way we want you to, though. Sometimes, Lord, you answer our prayers later. Sometimes you answer our prayers differently than we want. But it's because your ways are higher than our ways. And we pray that we would trust you. We pray, Lord, that you'd be with each one here this morning, Lord. So many are going through different things. We pray, Lord, for each one that is here and each one that we've been praying for and each one we have prayed for, Lord, that you would work in each life, Lord. Help each one of us to know that you love us, that your thoughts for us are more than the sand of the seashore, that you care about us. Lord, help us to be loving to people around us, to be the Bible that some, that's the only Bible we'll ever read is our life. Help us to be a witness for you in a very powerful way. To people around us. Lord, we thank you for the Christmas season and all the plans that we're making. Lord, we pray, Father, that you'd be the center of them all. We pray these things, Father, in Jesus' <coughs> precious name. Amen. I'm going to ask the uh, uh, Ken to come and share a communion moment. from Luke 22, 19 and 20. And he took the bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body which was given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you. You know, some people probably wonder sometimes why we have communion, why we commemorate Jesus' death. Well, one reason is because Jesus, Jesus asked us to do this. He asked us to do this in remembrance of him. In 1 Corinthians 11, we read, 1 Corinthians 11, 25 and 26. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my, in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. When we do this, we proclaim Jesus' death until he returns. We proclaim what he did on that cross, what he did for each of us. And so, as we remember Jesus' death and resurrection, we take communion and remember the sacrifice he made for us.
we read these words in 1 Corinthians 11. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Can we to thank the Lord for his broken body? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the, the opportunity we have to commemorate your death and resurrection. We thank you for this bread, which represents your body that was broken for us. And we thank you, Lord, for being willing to go to that cross and take our sin upon yourself. In Jesus' name, amen. given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take the bread together. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Brian, would you thank the Lord for his shed blood? Lord, we thank you for sending Jesus to the cross. We thank you that he hung on the cross, that he bled and died for us to save us from our sins. As we partake of this cup together this morning, Lord, it, that it will be a reminder of the great sacrifice that you made for us, how much you loved us, and you gave your life for us. Thank you, Lord. Such 
of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Let's take the cup together. Father, we thank you, Lord. For what you went through is Mary and John, and Peter, and these other followers of you, Lord, watched the last breaths you took. Lord, they watched you die. And we read about it. And we know you died for us, and we thank you. We can never thank you enough. And we thank you, Lord, that you showed us in your word that we are to have this bread and this drink to remember you. And we thank you for this physical experience that we literally can taste this, these elements that remind us of you and as physical as they were, Lord, it was just as physical that you were here on this earth and you died on the cross. And what an amazing thing that you rose from the grave. And you were seated at the right hand of God, Lord. And one day we will see you. One day soon. And Lord, it's going to be so incredible. And we thank you, Lord, for... The word you gave us that we can follow you each day. Help us, Lord, to be in your word, to be praying and spending time with you. And that our walk with you will not be just coming to church once a week, but it will be a daily walk, Lord, that we talk to you and spend time with you, that you'll be with us no matter what we're going through. And Lord, when we suffer, help us to remember that you suffered more and that you are with us. We pray these things, Father, in Jesus' name. <coughs> May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he give you grace and peace. <coughs>